some underlying principle or presupposition that, that governs realpolitik. So Erdogan is an Islamist. Anyone who studies the policies and politics of Erdogan understands that he is an Islamist. He wants the caliphate to come back. That's why he desecrated the Church of Hagia Sophia. Armenia, the border is still the same, the country is still the same. Obviously, the culture would be different because the church would not have played a role. Yes. But there would still be a conflict. But all you're doing in your thought experiment is replacing the unifying effect of the church with the unifying effect of something else. And you're heckling me, saying I'm calling for a religious war, but yet I've given you four opportunities to condemn the Islamists, and you haven't. Yeah, largely they want to be ruled by Armenia, but, I'm, but my, my postulation is that it's not primarily due to religion. So the Muslim Armenians in Turkey don't want unity with Armenia, but the Armenian Christians in Azerbaijan do want unity with Armenia. So yeah, religion I mean is the principal factor. One of the topics that I want to talk about is the conflict that is going off in Greater Armenia. Is it, put your hand up if you heard about the conflict in Armenia and Azerbaijan. Okay, our Christian brothers and sisters in Greater Armenia are fighting for their land right now. They're fighting against an aggressive Azerbaijan, backed by an imperialist Turkey. Turkey who is led by President Erdogan, is an imperialist inspired by the Ottoman Caliphate, which means that he is inspired by Islamic imperialism. He wants to re-establish an Ottoman Caliphate. He wants to re-establish an Islamic Caliphate, and Turkey is increasingly pushing its way around the world and region. It is established itself in um, Libya. It has established itself in Algeria. It has intervened in the civil war in Syria. It has allied with Islamist terrorists in Syria against the government of Bashar al-Assad, who was defending Christians as well as his own political ambition. And he has now transported some of those Islamist terrorists to Azerbaijan to fight against Christian Armenians. Which means that right now, jihadis working for the government of Azerbaijan are killing Christians, driving Christians from their homes. They have recently bombed a Christian church that is an UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is the kind of vandalism being carried out by this jihadist regime. Christians, we owe it to our brothers and sisters in Armenia to stand against the aggressions of Azerbaijan and the Turkish government because they are one in the same. Erdogan is the one encouraging Azerbaijan to follow the path of war. And we Christians, and we Christians, I will, sir, go, sir, we know the sir, 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 you can heckle me, but I'll just shout. We Christians owe it to our brothers and sisters. Yes, you're right, I am. We Christians owe it to our brothers and sisters in the Armenian church to stand against the Azerbaijan. Those brothers and sisters were failed in 1915 when Western Christians on the whole stood by and allowed the Turks to slaughter over a million Armenians. We cannot fail them again. We must raise our voice. America, we must stand up America for them. We must stand up Iraqis. for our brothers and sisters in Armenia. Which means that all of you, at the very least, must challenge the government not to be neutral and to stand with Armenia against Azerbaijan. The disputed area, if I get the uh, pronunciation correct, is a place called, and I'm probably going to mispronounce it, I can't remember, Nango Karak or Barak or something like that. Aksak. Aksak. Narango Karaban. Narango Karaban. Or Ansak. So, legally, it was recognized as a part of Azerbaijan. And I say, so what? The fact is, it is ethnically Armenian. And those Armenians 
want to be united with Armenia. The Western governments bombed Serbia to steal Kosovo. If they can bomb Serbia to steal Kosovo, then they can bomb Azerbaijan to steal Greater Armenia. Ladies and gentlemen, the Armenians do not want to be part of Azerbaijan and the disputed zone is ethnically Armenian. Then the Liberals say, well, this is an ethnic conflict, not a religious conflict. Well, I'm sorry, aren't those same Liberals the same ones that use intersectionality to unite issues of transgenderism with issues of racism because they say that these two issues intersect? Are they the only ones that can talk about intersection? Well, the Armenians may be an ethnicity, but they're also a church. So this is an ethno-religious conflict. And they cannot have their cake and eat it. They can't say it's intersectional when it suits us, but it's not intersectional when it doesn't. And I would say to every Russian Christian who hears this, and I'm not under any illusions, obviously Putin will never hear this, but on the off chance that he should, by some miracle, if this should pass his YouTube channel as he's watching it, and maybe to help, JC could entitle it, Message to Putin. It would be this. Is the Russian Orthodox, is the Russian state Orthodox? Is it a defender of Orthodox Christians? Well, right now, Putin and the Russian people, if you don't come to the defense of the Armenian Orthodox Church, then what you have proven is that you are nationalists before Christians. Because a Christian should never place the nation state before the church. And our fight for the church always comes first before the nation state. So if you put the interests of the Russian state before the interests of the Orthodox Church, you have failed in your brotherhood and you have followed in idolatry the nation state. And that is why I rail against the nation state for Christians. Because too many Christians prefer the interests of the nation state over the interests of the church. Right now it is very clear cut. Our solidarity should be to the Armenian Orthodox Church against its enemies. And that means its enemies in Azerbaijan, their Islamist terrorist allies who are now fighting for them, and Turkey, that enemy of the West that is at this moment siding with, allying with, and helping terrorists fight a jihad in the West against Armenia. Ladies and gentlemen, Boycott Turkey. Turkey is a rogue state. And I want to be clear. I met lots of Turks from Constantinople who do not like Erdogan. I know that many Turks are against Erdogan. And so my comments should be heard as being against the Turkish state and not necessarily against the Turkish people. So, any questions? Now's your chance. So the question is, I'm a warmonger. I want to lead Christians, uh, militias into war. The fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, I don't remember the likes of him going up to the jihadis who come to this park, the prosecuted ISIS fighters who have been in prison, who come to this park, and those that defend them, and going up to them and saying, you're a warmonger. He's never appeared on film saying that. And why, why is he, why is he doing that? He says he's not on film. There we go, he's on film. Why is he doing that? Because Muslims follow a supremacist ideology. What they want to do to you, they complain if you do to them. But let's be clear, I have not called for Christians to go in militias to fight in Armenia. What I have said is that Christians must stand in solidarity with the Armenians. 
And I said at the very least you should do is bend the ear of your political representative and make it very clear to them that you expect them to speak out in favour of the Armenians in Parliament and to call for the nation state to intervene on the side of Armenia and to bomb the Islamists fighting for Azerbaijan. Perfect. If we can bomb the Islamists who we are invading Syria, we can bomb the Syrian, we can bomb the Azerbaijani Islamists who are fighting in Azerbaijan, who are transported by that Islamist state, Turkey. We should cast NATO out of Turkey. So, any other questions? Let's let's liar. let's do other questions. You're a liar. Why don't you tell America stop killing millions of Muslims? So, the question is, why do I not tell America about killing millions of Muslims? The brother doesn't realize that America is a secular state by constitution. Bullshit. The Americans do their politics from a liberal, classical Bullshit. perspective. Trump, Trump does they not don't do America. it, they don't do he it from a religious no perspective. But, ladies and gentlemen, Armenians are Orthodox Christians. Yes. They are one of the most religious societies in the world. And so any fight involving the Armenian Orthodox Church is a fight of the whole church. Yes. And so we Christians must stand with our Armenian Orthodox brothers in their struggle. And that is why it is religious. The liberals can't have it both ways. They can't posit an ideology of intersectionality when it suits their transgender ideology, but then say you can't use our intersectionality when it contradicts their religious pluralist ideology and that is what the liberals are trying to do they're trying to have one rule for me now and a different rule for you then it is also a religious conflict because the islamists that were transported by the turkish government to fight for the azerbaijani government understand their fight in religious terms they are fighting because of religion. No. They are killing They're Christians because of they are religion. And dying for money. They don't care about so, religion. These guys, notice, have had multiple opportunities to condemn the Islamists who have gone to Azerbaijan. But both of them have failed to do so. I wonder why. Maybe when they next speak they'll condemn the Islamists who are going to Azerbaijan to fight for the Azerbaijani no, government. However, America they are mercenaries, they say. Countries. Well, ladies and gentlemen, America we have found a legal way, licit and legal, for Christians to go to Armenia and to fight for the Armenian government. The Armenian government simply needs to employ Christian mercenaries. Bullshit. And if that is fine, for the Islamists to do it, the Liberals can't complain if the Christians do it. But something tells me they will. Because for too long, we Christians have been allowing everyone else to live by a double standard. They have not followed the rules that they ask us to live by. It's time that Christians live according to their own faith not the hypocrisies Bullshit. and double standards of the liberals and the islamists and the muslims so now let me ask you this question do you condemn the islamists that have gone to azerbaijan to fight against the christians notice so he's asked me to educate him so now let me, so now let me answer him brother bring the camera back so now let me answer him notice he had the opportunity to condemn Islamists, and he didn't. Bear that in mind. Why were they Islamists? Because they were the Islamist fighters 
who fought against the government of Bashar al-Assad in the civil war, backed by the Turks. They were allied, the Turkmen, the Turkmen who were fighting with the Turks, sided with Al-Qaeda. They are Islamists. They go into battle, drawing out Al-Waqbar. They don't go into battle, fighting freedom and liberty for all. They go into battle against Christians because they are employed by an Islamist government. Erdogan is an Islamist. The Turkish government is an Islamist ideology. So let's give this guy another chance. Because he was put the camera back on him. Because the whole time he was just talking, he wasn't even listening to the answer. Which just goes again to show the Muslims in the park ask questions but they don't listen to answers. Now that I have explained to you why they are Islamists, do you condemn them? I am son of God. Hallelujah. Silence. Okay, do you condemn them? Do you condemn them? No, brother, brother, you, 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 you talk to him now. So, he asked the question. I gave an answer, he was ignoring the answer. That's his fault. Are there any other questions from anyone else about this topic before I move on to my next one? Go on. You're kind of framing the, the Azerbaijani-Armenian conflict as if the, the basis for the conflict is religious. Do you, do you accept that it's not religious, it's about geography, it's about politics, it's about economy? No, I accept that there is an intersection between religion and ethnicity in the Karabakh region. The, wait one second, those Armenians, the majority of people in the disputed area are Armenian. They wanted, even before the collapse of the Soviet Union, they wanted to be governed by the Armenian part of the Soviet Union. Yeah, the only reason, religion. the only reason why it didn't happen, the only reason why it didn't happen is because of the collapse of the Soviet Union. Those people don't want, why? to be governed by Azerbaijan because their, their they are, is their, Armenian. which is both orthodox yeah, and Armenian. You cannot separate, you cannot separate, you cannot separate their the understanding the of themselves. Like Ask any Armenian whether I'm you Armenian. can. Brother, you're a Muslim. I'm not Muslim. What, are you an Armenian Christian? I'm not Christian either. Okay. I was raised Christian Orthodox. So you've denied your Armenian heritage then? No, I haven't denied it. I've, I've chosen my own path in terms of, of spirituality. Are the, are, the, are, the, are, the, are the Armenians, are the Armenians Orthodox Christians? They are, yeah. Did and they the declare... a Christian nation. Exactly. exactly. So here's the thing, bro. When a when the I don't deny my heritage, when, I know my history. When the Azerbaijanis, when the Azerbaijanis take over that area, Bearing in mind that they're using Islamist mercenaries. You know about that, right? But, but what you're doing Are they is using Islamist mercenaries? I don't know, personally. They may or they may not be. You seem, you seem what I'm saying to selective you this, in your knowledge of no, the issue. What I'm saying to you is this, that you're tying the religion into the motivation of the act. They, the, they, the two things are connected. No, they're not connected at yeah, all. Yeah, they are. The fact is there's a small enclave of Armenian people within Azerbaijani territory, and this caused political conflict. There's nothing, there's nothing religious about Let it. Let me ask you this question. Recent, that's the only point I want recent, to make. No, wait one second, because you're saying that it's not connected. Islamists from Syria have been em, um, employed and transported by the Turkish government to fight with the Azerbaijanis. Those Islamists are fighting a religious war. Why would, why would Islamists from Syria fight with the Azerbaijanis? It's why a different you? country, different government. So it's not about politics. They're a different ethnicity. Yeah, but what's that got to do with it? At the end of the day, you're saying it's two, demonstrating. two Muslim groups are fighting. No, religion has nothing. The to Armenians do with it. aren't a Muslim group. They're a Christian group. No, you said the Syrians and the Azerbaijanis. So what? You see, you're not even listening. Sorry, I those. No, what a go surprise! Ahead. You're not even listening. So let's Sorry. try this again. Go ahead, go ahead. The Turkish government. Yeah. So a different government yeah. has employed Islamist mercenaries who sided with Al Qaeda to fight with the Azerbaijanis against Christian Armenians. Okay, but what do you think the motivation for that is? Do you think that it's a crusade against Christianity or do you think that the Turkish have some economic vested interest in doing that? 
There's an intersection with economics as well, I wouldn't deny that. No, but you're, you're trying to make out as if the primary motivation for these con conflicts is religious. Erdogan, Erdogan, that. Erdogan, it is. Because, why do the Armenians feel Armenian? Because of their religious identity. Everything about Armenian culture is connected to the church, true? It's, yeah, I mean, yeah, Armenian culture is heavily dominated by the church. Exactly. Yeah, but so, it's not so. So, that. one second. So, so one second. But so, the reason why the Armenians feel Armenian is because they have a common cultural language which they express through the church. There's many different things. There's language, there's food, there's. Uh, Dancing, Wait one second. There's, there's a lot of uh, facets. All of those, culture. all of those things You're pass. Saying, all of those things pass through the filter of the church. At the end, of, well, that may that may or may not be so. I'm talking about the conflict between Azerbaijan Who's and Armenia. Who's Telling you that the the basis of this conflict is not religious. Who standardised? That's the, that's in debate here. Yeah, 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 that is in debate, and I'm contesting you're wrong, because because the reason why the Armenians want to be ruled by other Armenians and not by Azerbaijanis is because they have more in common with their Armenian yeah. brothers and Maybe sisters. Like wait, 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 don't, don't, don't interrupt, otherwise what? we just get into a shouting match. So you're to don't get out. interrupted, we just Can get into a shouting match. No, you're gonna wait, we're gonna wait. Okay, go or otherwise, so otherwise we just get into a shouting match. So, I am contesting, yes, religion plays a role in this. The ethnic, the you're choice. going to interrupt, I'm just going to raise my voice. The way that we conduct a conversation Bro, is that we do don't a do talk do do in do which that. you don't interrupt Bro. and in which I don't interrupt. Don't now shout. I can listen to you, but that means that you have to try and listen to me. That means that you have to be quiet when I'm talking. So I'm going to try and talk and let's see if the brother can contain himself. So. Ethnically, the Armenians want to be ruled by other Armenians because of their culture, because of their religiosity, because of their history, and all of those things, their dance, their language, their religion, their culture, their customs, their traditions, have all been interwoven with the church. You can't separate the two things out. So the ethnic Armenians want to be ruled by other ethnic Armenians because they have more in common with other ethnic Armenians and they have more in common with other ethnic Armenians because of the Orthodox Church. Okay. You're saying Am I wrong? Yes, your point is that the primary filter that, that, um, that dictates Armenian culture is religion or that the reason that this small enclave of Armenian people that don't exist geographically within Armenia, the only reason or the primary reason they want to be ruled by Armenians is because of religion. No, what about language? Filtered don't by the church. No, don't you think that language is a better primary indicator than religion? No. Because if you can't talk to someone, don't you think that's... You're an Armenian speaking English. Mm -hmm. He's an Egyptian speaking English. This, he's, this is an Indian speaking English. Yeah, but you're asking a group of... Uh, our cultures are not the same. Well, me, yeah. me, maybe me and his is. I understand your point of view and I, and I respectfully disagree. I think... Well, well I'm proving my point. You haven't proved it. The, okay. the primary filter is not religion. You, you offered... Hold on. You offered language as, a, as, a, as an alternative yeah. to religion. So yeah. let, me, let me explain why you're wrong. You're wrong because here we have an Egyptian, an Armenian, a Pac uh, an Indian and an Englishman and we're all speaking English. But me and your, my values and your values are not the same. My culture is not the same as your culture. My beliefs are not the same as your beliefs. We've got language in common, but we disagree on everything else. This brother's a Muslim. He speaks English, but his values ain't my values. His culture ain't my culture. His customs aren't my customs. We don't have any of those things in common. But here's an Indian, but he's a Christian. One second, we celebrate the same festivals we believe in the same God and we follow the same values. So religion trumps language. What's your other option? It's not an, I don't need another option because at the end of the day, you could share a religion and still not be un united in culture, in, in point of view. In but the Armenians are. Yeah, the Armenians are. But so that's the with, point. They're not with the Azerbaijani. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, but it's not that's because, what I'm saying. It's not because of religion, bro. Azerba uh, Azerbaijanis not, and Armenians you, in the disputed area can no, understand one I'm another. I'm telling you that economics, politics, yeah, language, yeah. all of those, these things those intersect play a much bigger well. role than religion in this conflict. Like, like, yeah, I, 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 I'm not denying. At the end of the day, on, we, li we live in a world where the primary driving factor for every single conflict is economics. And for you to say that it's religion, you're taking an argument 
archaic view. We don't live in the in 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 the in the year 10,000 when it's the Crusades going on, bro. The primary the primary motivation for conflict is never religion. You, Can you, I respond? It's like me. It's like me saying, like, I don't know where the guy went, but one of your friends pointed out that it's like me saying that the motivation for the for the war in Iraq from America and Britain and, and whoever was motivated primarily by a Christian Islam conflict when we all know it wasn't. It was motivated by oil, by money, by Can land, I reply by now? geography. Can I reply now? So, so, so no. Let let let's let's just deal with that because despite saying he didn't need another option apart from language, he actually did offer one. He offered the option of economics. And, and to be fair, I agree with the observation of Karl Marx. Economics really does influence a lot about politics. And so he's right. I, I agree with him a lot. However, however, ladies and gentlemen, consider this. I'm going to prove why he's wrong in this example. Because Azerbaijan is richer than Armenia. So if it was all about economics, the Armenians would want to stay part of Azerbaijan because Azerbaijan is richer than Armenia. No, no, wait, no, I did not interrupt you. Do not interrupt me, otherwise we get into a shouting match. I did not interrupt you. Do not interrupt me. Do not interrupt me. Azerbaijan is massively richer than Armenia and that is part of the reason why Azerbaijan now is wanting a conflict because Azerbaijan thinks it can win. It lost the last war between 19, uh, 1988 and 1994. They, they, the Azerbaijanis lost 74,000 men to the Armenian 24,000. The Armenians kicked their ass. But then the Azerbaijanis discovered massive oil fields. And Azerbaijan now is richer than Armenia. So if it was about economics, the Armenians in Azerbaijan would want to be part of Azerbaijan. But they don't. So once again, religion is trumping economics, religion is trumping language. What now, you yeah. mean is you're making a fallacy of, you're assuming that what the people in, in, um, in the region want is, is representative of what the governments want. The governments are the one in conflict. It's not, it's not because the people are saying, oh, we want to be part of Armenia, and it's the governments that are in conflict. Are you saying that so, the people, are you, are, you, are you arguing, just for the record, because I know Armenians are going to watch this and call you out, are you saying that Armenians in the disputed area, the average villager, is saying that they want to be ruled by Azerbaijan? No, I didn't say that. So what are you saying about the average villager? No, I'm, you, you said that if it was about economics, then the Armenians would want to be part of Azerbaijan because Azerbaijan is richer. But I'm telling you, regardless of what the Armenians want, we're talking about the governments in conflict here. We're not talking about the desires of the people. In, Do in the people region. want to be ruled by Armenia or Azerbaijan? I mean, largely Armenia. I think there, are, there is some Azerbaijani people in the region as well. It's I know that. Homogeneously Armenian. I know it but, isn't. Yeah, largely they want to be ruled by Armenia. But, I'm, but my... My postulation is that it's not primarily due to religion. I, I don't think this is this is a very this is a very wild claim. I think it's it's quite a straightforward claim. So what what is it? So, right, allow me to reply. I'm say, you're go, saying that go on, the finish culture, your point and then the I'll culture in Armenia is heavily dominated by the church, but for you to, to demonstrate it as the primary factor through which all other facets of Armenian culture is filtered through, I think is just a bit narrow-minded. So let me address that point because. You, you've offered language and I've dismissed that. You offered economics and I've dismissed that. In, your, your, in the talk that you've just given, you didn't offer a third option. I am still defending the thesis that the Armenians in the disputed area want to be governed by other Armenians because they have more in common with those other Armenians. No, that's, that's one second, true. one that second. And the reason for that is because of the church. Right, there is no area, okay. there is no area, okay. what well, there is no area of culture that the Armenians are fighting for that has not been absorbed in Armenian orthodoxy. That's fine. Pew Research, one second, Pew Research has talked about what are some of the most religious countries in the world. Romania, for yeah, Christians, yeah, for Christians. Yeah, Romania is one of the most religious. Armenia is one of the most yeah. religious. 90, 98% of Armenians Orthodox identify as Orthodox Christians. Not just that they identify, but that they actually connect and practice their faith. Yeah. So therefore, for them to separate Armenian 
from religion. But your argument is so narrow-sighted because. So what? What? What other alternative have you got? No, Give but, me another one. But by your argument, you could take any political act done in Armenia and say that the motivation is is ecclesiastical. I'm telling you, that's not the case. You could remove. If less, less, less do. I'm not applying it to let's, everyone. Let's no, no, that's not one true. One second, one second. Let's do a thought experiment. Wait, wait. Here. Do you mean you don't want to be interrupted? No, you can interject, but I just want to do. I just want. I, to I just want to make sure we're we're it's working by the though. same rules. The conversation goes with back and forth, but you don't need to let each other talk for ten minutes without without. I wasn't talking for ten minutes. The only point I want to make is this: let's do a thought experiment where everything is the okay. same. Armenia and Azerbaijan are in exactly the same place, yeah. and um, the same conflict is going on. Okay. But we we remove. The, the church from the history of Armenia. Okay. Armenia, the border is still the same, the country is still the same. Obviously, the culture would be different because the church would not have played a role. Yes. But there would still be a conflict. There would still be a conflict because there's Armenian people okay, there. Okay, can I engage with your thought experiment? Sure. Because I, I, I think thought experiments are quite elusive, elucidating and it's a good use of a thought experiment. So, going with your thought experiment, the conflict would still be there, you're right. But all you're doing in your thought experiment is replacing the unifying effect of the church with a unifying effect of something else. So you, you're, so the Armenians would still be united by a culture. But all you're doing, but but now in that real example, that's the church. In your thought experiment, we're just ignore, saying it's not the church, but therefore it's something else. So that proves the point that the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia has an intersection along religious lines. It isn't the only intersection. I've already conceded, okay. I've already conceded, I've conceded. No, I actually said that if you just weren't here when I said, when I, when I said it, because you weren't listening to the whole talk. There you go. So the, the, the fact is there are other intersections. Um, economics is definitely an intersection, yeah. absolutely. The Azerbaijanis would not be pushing for a war now, except for the fact that because of their now greater wealth, they have upgraded their military beyond that of Armenia. So you're right. But that proves that it isn't about just economics, because if it was just about economics, the Armenians in Azerbaijan would be in a better position in Azerbaijan than they would be in Armenia. But the fact is... But they still want out of a richer country to be united to a poorer country. Yeah. Why? That's my question. Why? No, Please answer that. It's, it's, it's I engage with your thought. Cultural. Thank you. And what's the dominating factor of the culture the of Armenia? Church. Thank you. So but I'm right look, then. Let's look at the nature of the conflict. You said that Turkish, um, the Turkish government has been employing Syrian militia. They have. To, to do whatever. They have. Why has, why has Turkey and, and Russia been getting involved with the conflict? It's Brilliant. They have a geopolitical interest in the region. Yes. It's nothing to do with religion. Why these other countries are getting involved? Yes, it is. So when, no, it's not. Yes, it when is. Turkey are employing what you what you claim to be. I don't know if this is true or not. Um, religious militia to, to to go and fight. That may be true, but that's not the motivation for the Turkish to pay those guys. The motivation for the Turkish to pay those guys is to gain geopolitical power in the region. So let me let me engage with that point. Because now what you're talking, you're, you're offering another example. You're talking now about real politique, as they use in, in, in the study of politics. So we've, we've dismissed your linguistic option. We've dismissed your economic option, but not completely. And now you're offering the idea of real politique. But let's, let's understand something. Real politique always sits on a bedrock. It always sits on a bedrock. So there's some underlying principle or presupposition that, that governs real polity. So, Erdogan is an Islamist. Anyone who studies the policies and politics of Erdogan understands that he is an Islamist. He wants the caliphate to come back. That's why he desecrated the church of Hagia Sophia. That is why he continues laws that dis discriminate and persecute against the patriarch of Constantinople. That is why in his base there are many Islamists who are working within the base of his government. Not all Turks are Islamists. Many Turks are against him. There was a coup, remember? So there's lots of Turks against Erdogan. But why did Erdogan help the Azerbaijanis with Islamists from Syria? Why? Because he speaks their language, he has their ideology, and he wants to see a greater Turkish Ottoman Islamic Empire. He's inspired by the Ottoman Empire. He wants to re-establish the Ottoman Empire and he wants him to be the man that does it. And what was the Ottoman Empire? 
an Islamic empire. So Erdogan is thinking religiously. The Armenians are thinking religiously. It's not the only reason, but it is definitely one of the factors. Now, I'll let you reply and then I've got something to say. A brief point. Um, I think I've made a point where we're going to diverge here is my idea of the whole origin of religion and what it was used for historically, why it originated when it did and why the Muslim um, empire exploded when it did right after the creation of the, of the religion. This is because religion has always been used as a primary tool or vehicle for empire to grow and expand. So for Erdogan to, to lean on his um, Islamic and um, on, on, his, on his religious roots on the Ottoman Empire and such, um, it makes sense because religion has always been used as a tool to expand empire. So I, d I don't think that we can say that religion is the primary driving factor here. The primary driving factor is still power, politics, economy, money. But it's, it's being put through a, religion, a religious frame because, as I said, religion has always been used as such, as a vehicle for power, as a vehicle for, for empire. Okay, let me reply to that. Firstly, the, 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 firstly, there has been times when politics have driven religion. That's true. But there's also been times when religion has driven politics, and that is also true. So it is very simplistic to simply say religion is a tool of politics because very often politics is a tool of religion that yeah. is, that is a fact so no so no no one, time, so it so it is so it is too simplistic to come out with those characterizations now i want to bring something into this that we haven't yet considered which is that regardless of any criticisms that you might make as a disciple of jesus i have to follow the example of jesus and jesus has created one church that includes the armenian people Jesus commands me that I should love and serve my brothers and sisters. Even the example of washing their feet is the example that I'm thinking of. Now, if my brothers and sisters are being persecuted for any, any reason, economic, political, or religious, or linguistic, my duty as a Christian is to stand with them in solidarity. My religion motivates my politics. That is what I must do as a Christian. We Christians are commanded to do good to all men. By extension, that includes all women, just to say. But like, so do good, one second, do good to all men, but especially those in the house of faith, which means that my loyalty, my, yes, my faith, my faith, the Christian faith, my loyalty to the Armenian Christians is greater than the, my loyalty to the British state. It's greater than my loyalty to an Englishman. And I would argue, and this might frazzle your brain, but I would argue that I have more in common with an Armenian Christian than you do, even though you're Armenian and I'm English. Well, I mean, I don't know. Do you, do you eat lach marjun? Do you, nope. do you listen to traditional Armenian music? No, I don't. I don't know. So just because you're a Christian, it doesn't But I celebrate you. Christmas and I celebrate Easter yeah, and I understand what they mean. Bro, those are basically secular holidays nowadays. Like everyone celebrates Christmas. You don't need to be a believer to do so. It doesn't mean that you've got more in common what, 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 what do, that lives halfway across what, the world. What does an Armenian? You oh, sorry, you know the patriarch. We, we both agree that the patriarch. What's the pat? Not it's not patriarch. The, the 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 leader of the Armenian Orthodox Church. I don't know. What's his name? I have no idea. Neither do I. However, <laughs> would we both agree, even though we can't remember his name, um, that we would both agree that he, we can use him as an example of a Christian, right? Sure. So let's compare me and you about who is more like him, okay? Right? He celebrates Christmas and he understands the meaning of Christmas as the birth of Jesus Christ. But Jesus wasn't born in December 25th. That's that's not my point. According to the scripture, he that wasn't is not born my. In you're 25th. getting off the point. No, it's, I don't. I don't. I you're don't, totally missing sorry, the point. You're going to miss the point. I'm going to. I don't make. reject Christianity for a lack of understanding. I was raised a Christian. You're, you're, I, re you're, I rejected you're, my you're, faith you're, because you're, I understand. You're, miss, you're, you're missing my point entirely. I'm saying that, that have I have common, more in common with, with an Armenian. I have more in common with an Armenian Christian than you do. You have faith in common with them. That's and that is, it. and that to an Armenian. I don't agree with one you. second. Would you agree with this? That if we got the patriarch of Armenia here and we asked him what is more important to him, okay. eating Let the one sec, no one second. Must must I raise my voice no, no, with you, you don't, continuously? You don't, you don't need to, please. please just learn some manners. Like, if we do a thought experiment with me now, yeah, I did yeah. yours, you do mine. Okay. Imagine we got the patriarch of Armenia right here, and I asked him this question: Your Holiness, Your Grace. 
What is more important to you? The celebration of the Easter festival or eating the food that you mentioned? Which is more important to your identity? What would he say? I don't know. I, I would put money on the fact he would say celebrating Easter okay. over eating the food that you mentioned me or listening to the music that you mentioned. Let me just dispel your argument because faith is something that's fluid. You can be a Christian today and a Muslim tomorrow. Can you change your genetics to become Armenian? The, the, no. One second. So how can you have more in common than an Armenian than an Armenian? Just because you share the faith. It doesn't make sense for us. I'm glad you walked into that. So now let's use the example of the Armenians in Turkey who under the force of arms and persecution became Muslim. Those Armenians have lost their language, they've lost their heritage, their culture, they've lost their connection to Armenia. They don't even know some of them that they're Armenian. Would you agree that those people, because of the change of their religion, are now distant from Armenian culture? Well, not that distant because because they don't Arme celebrate Armenia, Armenian festivals. But, yeah, that's fair enough. But Armenia they don't was, celebrate Christmas. Armenia was part of the Ottoman Empire for a while. They right? don't, they, and they don't celebrate so anything that I'm you celebrate. That, that Armenians and Turkish, that the cuisine is very similar, the culture is very similar, regardless of religion. When we take religion out of the picture, the culture is still very similar. So you're arguing that food so is more important than religious festival. No, I mean, at the end of the day, they exist on the same plane. They're just a choice of what of what you want to do or what you want. To I, I want to I want to present I want to present evidence, right? Just for a moment. Just interject for one moment, I'm going to ask you one question. If you had the choice between giving up the food of Egypt or giving up the food of Islam, sorry, sorry, if you had the choice between giving up the traditional foods of Egypt and eating English food that was halal or giving up Islam but then eating Egyptian food, which would you choose? And I'm just asking you a very simple question. I'm at, so what is the answer then? You can't what food I eat to the religious beliefs. Thank you. Did you hear that? He doesn't, he doesn't agree with your comparison either, and neither do I. You can't, you can't put food as the marker of identity. Identity is so much deeper than food. And he agrees with me. Identity is something that's fluid. Identity is something fluid, right? You choose your identity. You could, you could, you could decide to be, you could wake up tomorrow and say, I want to be a woman, right? You could say, No, I you can't. Be, you could. You could go you, and have you, some surgery. You could say I identify. But that doesn't make you a woman. No, but it's your identity. But it doesn't make you a woman. This is my point I'm making: is that your identity is fluid. Your no, biology, it isn't. Your biology is your biology. It's not really fluid. I yeah. mean, you can do some uh, um, plastic surgery to yourself to alter it, to alter your facade. Doesn't make you a woman, though. Exactly, but your identity. So is you fluid. agree then? No, but what, my point is your identity is fluid, and biology trumps that. So you're talking biology now. Right? Biology, for me, because that, 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 that won't stand the path of ethno-nationalism. This idea that the oh, bio... No, one second. I'm not saying that you are, bro. I, don't, I, don't I am not saying that you are. Please hear me correctly. What I'm saying is that that is the first step along the road of ethno-nationalists. Ethno-nationalists argue that biology is more important than anything else. That biology is the predeterminate figure of identity. You have marshaled exactly that argument to counter my argument about the, pro the, the primacy of the Armenian Orthodox Church. You said you can change your religion, but you can't change your ethnicity. Those were your words, which means that you marshaled an ethno-nationalist argument, even though you're not an ethno-nationalist. Now, my point to you is, bro, my point to you is, bro, as demonstrated by the fact of the Armenians in Turkey who don't know that they're Armenian, who don't celebrate Armenian culture, yeah. that don't speak Armenian, yeah. that don't eat Armenian foods, because Armenians eat pork. Armenian Christians eat pork in Armenia, yeah. but these Armenians don't because they're well. Muslim. Yeah, I know there's Turkish Christians, which proves that religion is greater than food in this question. So in terms of this question, the Armenian people, the thing that makes them, the thing, the thing, the thing, the thing that makes the Armenians in the disputed area want to unite with Greater Armenia, and the Armenians in Turkey who don't argue for a unification with Greater Armenia, is because the Armenians in the disputed area with Azerbaijan are Christians, but the Armenians in Turkey even though they've got the same ethnicity, are Muslim. So the Muslim Armenians in Turkey don't want unity with Armenia, but the Armenian Christians 
in Azerbaijan do want unity with Armenia. So yeah, religion I mean, is the principal factor no, above when, ethnicity. No, well, at the end of the day, there's, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not necessarily because Turkey is not, is not a religiously homogenous place, right? Uh, Armenia pretty much is, but Turkey isn't. After so they butchered the Armenians, yeah, and you know just, about the Armenian genocide, course, right? And not just the Armenians, but the Greek Syrians Christians, Greece, the Syrian Christians, yeah, the Greek Christians. Yeah, they, they butchered a lot of people. Yeah, and that's probably one of the most recent examples that you can bring of a conflict that was primarily religiously motivated. But I'm saying no, I'd point to ISIS. That's the most recent example of a religiously inspired conflict. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Anyway, oh, wait, what religion inspired ISIS? Oh, yeah, Islam. Sorry, there. I mean, I, I'm not here to argue with religion about you, with you. I just, I just came to dispute the fact that religion was the driving factor in the, dis in the conflict. And, and, I, and I respect the, the polite way, for the most part, that you've conducted yourself. But as you can see, I've defended my thesis from four critiques. You gave a linguistic critique, I defended it. You gave an economic critique, which has some merit, by the way. I defended it. You gave, you gave a food critique, critique a culinary critique. It wasn't a culinary yeah, critique, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a cultural critique. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and what I, I, I addressed that point, that there are some things that are at the heart of a culture, and there are some things that are on the periphery of a culture, yeah, and I, the Armenian Orthodox, the, the religious identity, I, I, I would bet real money with you, not that I'm a really a betting man, but I would put money on you, that if me and you went on, on holiday in Armenia, and we did the, a census, and we gave people a choice, Give up Armenian food but keep the Armenian religion, or give up the Armenian religion but keep Armenian food. I, I think, uh, let me, they let me would just side with Cult keeping the religion. Let me just say this: culturally, I'm British, and I was born here. My mum's fully English, and I've never even been to Armenia. I, sp I, I can speak a few Armenian words, but I'm not fluent. I feel sorry for you. Yeah, I feel sorry for myself. But listen, if we both went to Armenia, I guarantee that I would connect to any random Armenian on the street more than you would because I speak a few words of the language and you don't. Just because you're a Christian, you wouldn't have any basis to connect with them on. But I what bet if I learned... You would go and talk about once, Jesus Christ. No, you yeah, no, one, one, one second, one second, one second. But I would be able to go into an Armenian church and celebrate with the Armenians with I my full... I can do that, bro. Have you ever been to an can Armenian I, can church? I, can I, yes, I have actually. I, was in I Armenian have church. actually been to an I Armenian to church. Armenian I went to, I think Armenian it's in, is it in South Kensington? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been to your cathedral, thank you. So, you know, don't rush. Yeah, but so I'm one second, bro, bro let me finish, let well. me finish. You, here's, well. here's why you're wrong, here's why you're wrong. Because when I go into an Armenian church with Armenian Christians, our heart, mind and soul are the same. They're pointed towards our Lord Jesus Christ. When you go into an Armenian church, you can't point your heart, mind and soul to Jesus Christ because you don't love your Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. But an Armenian... I can have a spiritual... Here's, the, here's the other thing, here's the other thing. An Armenian would never laugh at that declaration. An Armenian That's would go, true. Amen. That's not true. You, yeah, but the, the thing is... An Armenian would just laugh at it. <laughs> but, but this is the point. I'm saying that I've got more in common with an Armenian no. Christian than he does. And most Armenians are Christians. We've, we've, gone, we've gone off full circle. Nice to talk nice. to you. Bro, it was really pleasant to talk to you, so I would like to give you a gift. I give out is gifts. No. Okay. It's really not. It really isn't. Right, okay. So this is a whole bunch of... Because I think... I think you might find this book interesting. I love reading so. it. It's a book that covers all the kind of things that Jesus never said that Christians say. Okay. So I think it'd be interesting because it'll help you to delve into what actually Jesus said as opposed to what you might hear amongst cultural Christians. All right, I'll take it. I'll mull over it with one of my friends. He likes your stuff, so. Nice all right, really nice to nice speak to with you. 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 look after yourself. And brother, brother, I hope one day you come back to me and you tell you you've recovered your heritage. <laughs> The heritage of the Armenian Orthodox Church. I doubt it. At least you've got faith. <laughs> yeah, same faith as your brothers and sisters in Armenia. So, had a long talk about uh, the disputed area in Armenia, and I've tried to draw out the, the challenge that belongs to the Russian Orthodox Church to defend. That's the people, by the way, not the patriarch alone. To defend their Armenian brothers and sisters, and the weight of history that demands that we Christians stand in solidarity with our Armenian brothers and sisters in their fight against the Azerbaijani government and their Islamist allies sent to them by Turkey, that Islamist government, that you should be boycotting because it is a despicable and vile state. Now, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is, put this guy on camera. This brother 
was given three opportunities to condemn the Islamists who have gone to fight against Armenian Christians. And each time, rather than condemn them, he didn't. So just be aware of who's heckling me. So just be, just be, just, just be aware. So you're not condemning them. Can you condemn any Christians? So you're not. So you are we agreed? You're not condemding them. But I don't know the, I don't know the ins and outs. Okay. Of so there we go. So ladies and gentlemen. And you're for so a ladies support. and gentlemen. No, I'm calling for Christian solidarity. You so need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. Regardless, regardless of what others do, we Christians must stand with the Armenian government. You can't condemn and what what I have what I have said. What I have said, bro. What I have said is that Christians should stand with the Armenians against the Azerbaijani government okay. and their Islamist okay, allies. So I stand by that statement. So I haven't said say, anything wrong. And you're heckling me, I'm saying I'm calling for a religious war, but yet I've given you four opportunities to condemn the Islamists and you haven't. So I find that very strange that you're saying I'm calling for a religious are, war, mate. but you won't condemn religious fighters. So I find that a bit interesting, just saying.